The Rurouni Kenshin live action series is the best anime adaptation ever made. With its final film now out and streaming on Netflix, I thought it was a good time to rank all five of these awesome films. Here's my pick for worst, the best in the series. So the first is my least favorite in the series, but it's still a pretty decent film. Roroni Kenshin was the world's first taste of the planned film series that would later become the hit it is known as today. Fortunately, it met and even exceeded in many fans' expectations. In particular, the filmmakers made the right choice in casting Sato, who would later bring Roroni Kenshin to life. It had great sword choreography that truly sold Sato's skills, and that's in big thanks to the action director Kenji Tanagaki. However, this 134 minute film had an average story at best, and a pretty unconvincing romance. It also had your typical villains and some plot inconsistencies. It's basically all swordplay and a no-brainer plot that nevertheless gets the job done. This is also the first film in the series, so not all the acting or choreography is as good as the other films. It mainly suffers because everyone was pretty new to this. It also has a hard time trying to capture everything from the first two volumes of the manga in just over two hours. Had this film been a failure though, it probably would have endangered the chances of the sequels getting made, so there's that. So despite the fact that the sword fights in this film are insanely good, the film comes up short because it tries to be too big. It's a 2 hours and 14 minute film that honestly could have been a lot shorter. The film is basically just the final battle with the series' main villain, Makoto Shishio. The legend ends was supposed to be an epic conclusion to the film version of its most popular story arc, but it ends up being a bloated, thinly spread story with only the littlest of substance. The actor Tetsuya does an excellent job portraying Shishio. He completely embodies the antagonist that served as the main foil to Sato's Kenshin. Ultimately, The Legend Ends is for many critics the lowest point of the series, and it probably would have been a lot better if it was shorter or just offered a bit more story. So for starters, Kyoto Inferno brought quite a few fan favorites to life. We get the introduction to the main villain in the series, Shishio, we also got the pretty awesome Ten Swords group, and there's also Sojiro who almost gave Kenshin a proper defeat. But ultimately, introducing too many characters also meant each of them having less screen time and thus less room to be fully developed. But the soundtrack and fighting choreography of Kyoto Inferno are outstanding, and it's an improvement over the previous film. Shishio and the Ten Swords also make a great threat to an otherwise invincible Kenshin, so we feel a lot more at stake in this film. It's a bit of a less faithful adaptation to the manga and anime, but it focuses more on making the film work in a more intense, realistic setting. It however could have resulted in a bit of better production overall. So when The Legend Ends came out in 2014, many of us just assumed that it was the end of the series. However, in 2017, a news report revealed that at least one new sequel was in the works. Fans later found out though that it wasn't just one, but two new films would mark the end of the series, and they would both be releasing in the same year, and are currently streaming on the platform Netflix. The first of the two, which is Roroni Kenshin the Final, sits at the very top of the Rotten Tomatoes ranking list. And it's for a good reason. It brings together the original cast for one last adventure. The Final introduces audiences to Anishi. He's a really tough foe from Kenshin's past. 
But unlike previous antagonists in the franchise, which usually involved illegal drugs or just wanted to rule Japan, this villain wants nothing more than Kenshin's head. And this gives the plot a true sense of fear for the protagonist. I'll also say the actor that plays Anishi has great charisma and successfully brings his character to life. Aside from well choreographed fights and a carefully handled romantic plot, the final also gave viewers a glimpse of many characters' fates, including one reformed villain who turns up as an unexpected ally near the film's climax. In the end, it successfully gave the manga's longest arc a satisfying portrayal. It also recreated the manga's battle energy, and it was overall a very compelling action-packed story, and among the best in the series. So it's kind of weird when you end the film series at the start of the story, but that's exactly what Rurouni Kenshin the beginning does. And in the end, it ends the series on a very strong note. Out of all the Rurouni Kenshin films, the beginning is the one that works the best as a standalone film. You don't need to see any of the other previous movies to understand it. In fact, seeing it will only enhance your appreciation of the films that came before it. The beginning also does away with the over-the-top elements of the previous films, and it focuses more on showing the audience how Kenshin became the legendary assassin turned pacifist in the first place. What I enjoy the most about this entry is it's much more grounded in reality than the other films. There's no wire fighting or crazy jumps or weird anime hairdos. It's very much a classic samurai film. It's also a lot more brutal, bloodier, and just darker than its previous films. Instead of beautifully choreographed sword fights, the film's battle look nothing more than just people frantically trying to kill each other. Its final fight also kind of reminded me of Akira Kurosawa's Rashomon, where it's just two vulnerable men just desperately trying to kill each other and clinging to life. The beginning is powerful enough to serve as an introduction to Veroni Kenshin, or as a way of the series to end on a high note. It's an excellent film, and it's the best in the entire franchise. So that's my ranking for Veroni Kenshin. It's a great series, and it's one I really enjoyed watching. Let me know how you'd rank the films in the comments, and please join my Patreon if you want to help the channel. Anyway, thanks for watching.